Um, so here's my talk, um, Snakes on a Plane. It's a bit of a stretch of the analogy, um, but hopefully you'll get the idea a little later on. So it's a, a nice KX production. Um, so how do we start? So a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and everybody's looking at me now going, what's this idiot doing? That's not Snakes on a Plane, that's Star Wars. Um, but basically, myself and Mark Sykes were having a conversation along the lines of how do we, you know, extend KDB Plus beyond, you know, the traditional ecosystem, how do we make it play better with other tools and technologies, and, you know, how do we bring it to that kind of next level rather than, you know, this nice niche little technology within the finance vertical. And so we wanted to bring it out. Um, so we had this conversation um, over the water cooler. Um, I found this actual image several months ago and I was putting the slides together last night at about 1am and I just realized halfway through that actually looks like it could be Mark and I having a conversation <laughs> around the water cooler. Um, so what it's saying here is, hey Mike, what's the difference between a data analyst and a data scientist? And he goes, I don't know, well about 30k per annum, <laughs> am I right? And then he goes, my name is Clive. Um, so we're having that conversation, you know, how can we go about doing this, how can we expand the community and I know we've done some of this stuff today with, you know, the ODBC driver with Simba and um, with version 3.6 and the Animap functionality. Um, so the first thing um, of one of the exciting announcements that we want to make today is now you can actually get KDB from the Anaconda distribution. Um, so not only is Anaconda a very good Python distribution, but it's actually a pretty good use case as a package manager as well. And it's probably been, been one of the complaints we've gotten in the past that, you know, it's good, we've got all this stuff, but we can't really package it together and, you know, deploy it and stuff like that and install it um, in a seamless manner. And um, so we've worked with Anaconda. We've worked very closely with Elan, um, who's based um, down in the Anaconda's uh, headquarters office in Austin, Texas. And um, so now, as of today, if you go to this URL, um, anaconda.org forward slash KX, um, we'll be changing it around a bit and making it look a little bit sexier. Um, at the moment, it just looks like this, um, so a Gravatar, um, um, but we'll be on the KX Gravatar and all that. But basically, you will have three packages that you'll be able to install. Um, as of the current moment in time, it's only available for Linux and OS X, but Windows is in the pipeline, as in like a couple of days away. Um, so, um, and they're actually dependent on each other. Um, so you've got KDB at the base, and it will install the um, non-commercial, the personal edition of the KDB Plus on demand. So you do have that requirement of the internet connection. Um, and then on top of that, you can install Embed Pi, and then on top of that, you can install JupyterQ. And um, so it's a whole dependency tree. So if you go in and you just install JupyterQ, it will install the Embed Pi package and the KDB package. Okay, um, so that's pretty um, good. We hope a uh, quick and easy way to get KDB installed. You know, previously you had to do the unzip file. People couldn't understand unzip apparently. So, um, you know, I was like, try and install Hadoop, and that's all I'm saying. Um, no offense, Hadoop. I'm not going to be so kind. Um, so basically, as you'll see, um, at 18 minutes past midnight last night, I came up with this video because I believe in Murphy's law, which isn't who gets to the bar first, and the other Murphy's law. You know, what will go wrong can go wrong, and. Um, so I recorded this video, um, just showing how we can do the install. Um, so as you can see here, I'll use the vape slash laser pointer. Um, all we have to do is just type out a simple command line, so minus C, KX, and then Jupyter Q. And that will play around for a couple of seconds, reaching out to the network and hooking up to the Anaconda framework. And now you'll see, basically, we get these three packages installed. So we'll install KDB, Jupyter Q, and Embed Pi, and you just have to do proceed Y. Obviously, you can just do minus Y at the command line as well. And you'll see, that was pretty quick and easy, wasn't it? Try and install like a lot of these other heavy clunky frameworks using this. Um, so now all we have to do is activate our um, Conda. Um, so now we're inside the base. Um, we'll be figuring out how to do it in other packages as well. So now these are our new terms and agreements that you have to agree to. Um, everybody remembers that South Park episode. Um, you, didn't, you didn't read the terms and conditions. Uh, <laughs> so you just put in your, you know, say yes, give your email address, give your name, uh, and then give the company. Um, and pretty much that's it. So here we go. We've got KDB installed. So you can do all your cool stuff. Do 1 plus 2 equals 3, thankfully. Whew. That was good. And then we can just load in embed pi. And we can start playing around, start calling um, Python directly from KDB. And then we can use some of the um, embed pi functionality as well. So you can see that we can do this all pretty quickly and easily. Um, and then, of course, you see, it's, it's amazing. Python's as good as Q at addition. <laughs> Um, so we exit, um, <laughs> barely. <laughs> um, so now we can actually play around with the Jupyter Notebook, so we can get that straight away. That's all been installed, all the dependencies for Jupyter are installed as well. 
Um, we can start off, so thanks to James Hanna and Andrew Wilson and the machine learning folks um, for putting together this team. So now we're inside the Jupyter kernel, and one plus one equals two there. So yes, three platforms addition is successful. And so I'm just going to create a, a quick and easy table. Um, and obviously you can see more of this stuff if you go over to the machine learning stand. They've got it inside sexy notebooks and stuff. I prefer to stick with the command line myself. Um, so there you go. Um, and then you do control D to exit, which I figured out yesterday thanks to Mark. <laughs> Took me a while. Um, so there we go. Um, so that's the video. So now you can get Anaconda um, to install KDB along with the libraries. And of course, we'll be doing more, adding more libraries, adding more functionalities. So any of the machine learning stuff that we do, we'll make sure that the dependencies are installed. So if there's a Keras, TensorFlow, you know, PyTorch, SciPy, et cetera, and they'll automatically get added as well. And so we're very thankful for the team from Anaconda. Of course, Francesca um, will be able to help you. And they've got a great demo in the corner as well. Um, so if there's any questions on that, feel free and ask those folks. And feel free to give us feedback as well. And we have added some of the documentation, thanks to Stephen, um, the librarian who's around here somewhere. Um, so it is available as of today um, on Anaconda. And we have the documentation set up on code.kx.com as well. Um, so with that, I'll move to my next slide. Um, so obviously, people were asking us a lot of questions about cloud. You know, how do we get into the cloud? So you know, we, we met Google, and we had some pretty good conversations with them. And you know, I just mainly went there for the free food. Uh, it's pretty good. There's great, very good quinoa bowls up there. So, um, but in the midst of the conversations, we decided we'd launch ourselves into the cloud. Terrible pun. So, um, as of today, we can now find KDB Plus on the Google Cloud Launcher. See, that's the analogy there. So, so clouds, anaconda, snakes, snakes on a plane. I don't know. It's <laughs> going downhill from here. Trust me, folks. And so now, um, as of today, if you type in this URL, um, you can get. Um, KDB Plus um, on-demand version, commercial edition, um, via um, Google Cloud. So you can get it straight away and launch it. Um, here's what the page looks like when you go to this URL. And all you have to do is click on um, Explore Launcher, and you'll get a list of um, lots of different technologies from WordPress and other database technologies that shall remain nameless. Um, but if you just search in the search bar for KDB Plus, um, you'll see it right here. So here's my second video. at. 25 past midnight last night, so bear with me if I start to go a bit crazy towards the end of today. So here you go. We can scroll down through, see all the stuff that you have available. And you can just type in KX. And there we go. KDB, KX, KDB Plus is available. Um, so we scroll down, and you see we've got the documentation added here, including on code.kx, thanks to um, Stephen Taylor as well. Um, so you grow up, and you just launch your compute engine. We have a minimum or a um, default instantiation setup with four cores. Um, um, and you can change and configure this, so you can change the size of your engine. We just have a default engine. So you can choose your zone, choose a number of CPUs, the different types of machines. So the big memory machines, the high CPU machines, or just the standard machines. Uh, I just got the one core instance because I'm a cheapskate. I didn't want to cost too much. And then you can set up your networking and all that stuff, but I didn't bother to do that for the purposes of this. We can just hit deploy, and the world starts spinning around. And the scripts start to run pretty quick to set up. Um, and you can see the sort of setup that you get. Um, you got your Jinja code. You got your Pi instances being set up. And it'll be ready in just a couple of seconds. And it's, it's pretty much it. So it's, it's very quick and easy. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, you can feel free to feed them back to us. And we'll be adding extra stuff to this, obviously, over time. So here's the uh, template properties. And then you can go directly and see your VM. And then you go up here. And you see there's an SSH button. You can just click on that. Uh, you can also use it, uh, use the G Cloud SDK as well to um, do this type of stuff too. Um, you don't have to do it this way. Um, if you prefer, you're just using your standard terminal or uh, whatever your terminal of choice may be. And uh, you can set up SSH keys and all that kind of stuff. And there we go. And hopefully, you can, probably can't see the text too well here, but basically, Q works. Okay. Uh, and one plus two equals three. It works on Google Cloud. So not only does it work on Anaconda and Jupyter, it works on Google Cloud as well. And um, so that's pretty much that video. That's probably the the second big announcement. Um, that I have, and I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so what's coming down the line? Um, obviously, as Andrew mentioned earlier, we've got um, containerization of KDB Plus now using the um, KDB Plus on-demand edition. Um, so we're going to be adding some more container support and plugging that inside the, um, the Google Cloud Launcher as well. Um, so if there are any questions and any feedback on that as well, we'll be more than happy to do it. Um, 
Then we'll also be doing more Kubernetes integration, so we'll be adding that as part of the Google Cloud Launcher. Um, we've actually done several successful projects um, using um, Kubernetes already with KDB, and so we'll be adding it to the Google Container Registry, so you can actually pull down the images straight away and run it using Kubernetes. So we had some really good examples where we were setting up ticker plants, including log files and the persistent disks, all programmatically, uh, or not programmatically, but config-driven from Kubernetes. And then we also did some um, historical database stuff where we were striping um, the data over multiple machines and doing really cool queries. And we'd bring an instance down just for a laugh, and we'd see it doing the self-healing. So it would bring up that instance again, so you could do this massive and um, parallel each style programming cross. And so we're doing more work on that in terms of actually, you know, commoditizing that and bringing it to the masses, as it were. But KDB Plus already works on Kubernetes. If there are any questions, it, it definitely does work, um, especially well on the, um, the GKE, which is the Google Kubernetes engine. And then we'll also be adding in some of our machine learning libraries inside. Um, so we'll be packaging not just KDB Plus, but some of our machine learning toolkits, including the Jupyter Notebooks um, uh, and stuff like that as well. So this is the best machine learning slide I could come up with. Um, and um, that's pretty much more or less it. Um, on the Google Cloud side, obviously, we have Annie Ma Weaver, who's here. Um, uh, yep, yeah, there she is down the back. And we had Antonio. And then on the Google Cloud Launcher team, I have to give big thanks to Emily Bates and Marcus Grimaldo. And most of all, it's Sergey here in the back, um, who myself and Sergey are working to late hours last night and trying to get this working. And it finally came online at about, I think, 6 PM yesterday. Um, so right now, you can go and, and launch KDB Plus um, from your browser um, directly in just a couple of clicks and a couple of seconds, and you're, and you're up and running. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. I just said I'd leave this slide, so some nice little words um, to end it with. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but it's the, the last few lines of Frankenstein. And then somebody decided to write in, as he drifted away, I could just make out his final words. It's OK if you could just call me Frankenstein instead of Frankenstein's monster. I really don't mind. The end. Thank you very much.